So having seen uh, these algorithms, now it's time for us to apply inclusion based analysis that is Anderson's analysis to uh, this particular program. So here is the program, I will not explain the types of the program, but the types are given here. Essentially, A, B, C, D are stru structure variables and the structure has a pointer field N, which points to uh, uh, a variable of the same uh, uh, structure type. And we have star X, which is a pointer to the structure and Y as a pointer to the structure. Uh, we will not get into what this program does. As I had said before, we are not interested in what the program does. We are interested in what we can do with this program. And in this particular case, we want to see what Anderson's points to analysis does on this particular program. After doing Anderson's points to analysis, we will then repeat uh, uh, Steensgaard's points to analysis and compare the points to graphs so obtained. So as I had said before, in practice, for every node, we collect a set of constraints. Where are these constraints coming from? These are the constraints that I was referring to. So we find out the set of constraints and we have to then find the least fixed point solution of this. Uh, we have already seen what is a fixed point. A fixed point is when you substitute the values obtained here, all these constraints are satisfied and we want to find out smallest such sets or least fixed points. So we can begin with an empty with an empty set. So initially we can assume that Px is empty, Py is empty and all these capital P's are empty sets and then we keep adding things to sets until we can't add them anymore. So these are the constraints. The first constraint says a should be included in the pointy set of X. The second says B should be included in the pointy set of Y. The third says that for every pointy Z of X, note that X arrow N means X points to a structure and the N field of that structure is being modified. So we pick up the pointies of X and the N field of those, those structure variables as you, because n is a pointer field, the pointy set of the n field of the pointies of x are made to include pointies of y. Similarly, we do something here. We take the pointy of x and the n field of the pointy of x is made to include the address of c here. Here, it's made to include the pointies of y. So these are the constraints and now we want to solve them one by one. Let's, let's look at the solution. So uh, when we solve this constraint, I'm going to show in blue the constraints that we are solving and the graph that we obtain. So when we solve this constraint, initially P is empty. So now X will start pointing to A. Initially there was no point of X, there was no out edge out of X. So we will now say X will start pointing to A. Now we have P, Y is a superset of B. So we have Y pointing to B. And now this particular constraint says that we want to pick up each field, each pointy of X and N field of that pointy must include every pointy of Y. So now we know that point of X is A and the N field of A now points to whatever Y points to. Note that if the pointy set of Y changes, we will have to repeat this assignment because we are doing flow insensitive analysis. And point of Y does change in the next statement. We are saying PY is a superset of P of X because of this particular assignment Y is equal to X. Which means that now Y starts pointing to A. And because Y starts pointing to A, we will have to execute this again. And then we will come back to it. We will make one pass through it and then solve it again. So the idea is 
we have a pool of constraints and we keep visiting the constraints until there is no further change. Now we say for every point T of X, the N field of the point T of X should point to C. So now X has a single point T A, so N field of A must point to C without erasing the previous point T of A along the N field. So we are saying that along the N field, this particular structure variable points to both B and C at some program point. Somewhere it points to C, somewhere it points to B. We are not able to make a distinction that at this point it points to B and at this point it points to C. We are simply saying somewhere in the program these are the pointies of the N field of A which happens to be the pointy of X. Now we add one more uh, uh, pointy. Now we have D because of this assignment X will include the pointy of D. The previous pointy is not removed. Now we have this. And now we redo the computation. We revisit each statement. These statements do not bring out any change but this statement now will bring out a change because we are saying for every point of x in this case a and d both these pointies on their n field should point to both the pointies of y which are a and n and therefore we get a graph like this. After doing all these assignments we have n the variable d on n field pointing to c and then we have because y must include all pointies of x therefore we have y pointing to d and then we have d pointing to b on n field we have d pointing to c on n field because of these, these three blue statements. The idea is since Px has changed, constraints 3, 4 and 5 need to be processed again. The order of processing the sets influences the efficiency of this fixed point computation significantly and a plethora of heuristics have been proposed in order to compute uh, this fixed point efficiently. Then we do one more round of uh, a fixed point computation one more one one more iteration for the fixed point computation we process three four five again and now we get these new edges and as, as you can see anderson's points to analysis gives this points to graph this particular points to graph a flow sensitive points to analysis at the end of statement six would have given us this graph x points to d previous point a of x is removed this points to relation is removed y points to a and this points to n so actual graph is much much simpler with many edges killed in particular y does not point to d at any point of time in the execution but uh, anderson's points to graph says that y points to d because Anderson's points to graph is uh, Anderson's algorithm is flow insensitive. So in principle statement 6 could be executed before statement 4 and therefore Anderson's points to analysis will say y could point to d. As we know this is spurious. This can never happen in any execution of this program which is precisely one single execution of the program because this is a straight line problem. So as you can see, there are so many spurious points to edges created. In fact, we are never going to get a self loop any time at any program point here in a flow sensitive points to analysis. So Anderson's points to analysis is a gross over approximation of the information that a flow sensitive analysis would otherwise compute. 
before you feel that this is very uninteresting and this is not very useful wait until we see what steens bohr's algorithm does so here this graph is a union of all graphs at each program point so this is a union so I, we do not get anything else other than this in particular we don't have d pointing to c we don't have a self loop over d we don't have d pointing to a or a pointing to d we don't have a self loop over n and we don't have d pointing to n all these are spurious points to relations that can never occur any so having seen Anderson's points to analysis, let's do Steen's Gauss points to analysis. So we have these constraints. Uh, I noted down these constraints. I'm not going to explain uh, all of them one by one, but they match the constraints that were given in the algorithm. So we have this constraint P points to A. This is created. And then we say for every point of x, unify uh, the pointy with a, but there was no previous pointy of x, so therefore there is no change in the graph. And now we add y to b, again there is no change in the graph. The third constraint says unify points to set of y and z dot n. What is that? z is a pointy of x which is a so the n field of a and b needs to be unified so we will first say we will have the n field of a pointing to b this is what we will end up doing and then we say unify points to set of x and y so we will unify b and a so that gives us a and B unified with an edge uh, like this because we had an edge from A to B and now A and B are similar. So we end up getting an edge from A to A and from B to B and from A to B and B to A like this. Now we say that we want to add C to the n field of the pointy of x. So pointies of x are a and b and we want to add c to it and then we want to unify it with a, b so we get points to graph like this. All these fields are unified. Eventually we want to add d to the pointy of x and we get this particular points to graph. As you can see this is an efficient algorithm. We do not have to iterate over it many times for this particular example. This is efficient because it has merged a lot of information. Uh, in particular, if we were to say x was point to everything and y was to point to everything in the beginning, there would be no change. So, in program analysis, efficiency depends on how many distinctions you wish to make. If you want to make very few distinctions, your algorithm can be very efficient, but it can also be very, very uh, over approximate. So, what is the meaning of this particular graph? If you blow it up, there is no further change. If you blow up this graph, we get all these points to graph. So, because A, B, C, D are equivalent locations and there is an edge to itself, to this node on n field n in the this red edges so we get a complete graph on a b c d on n it is far more edges than anderson's graph this algorithm is far more efficient but is far less precise so this is steen's gauss algorithm for the same example we can compare it with Anderson's graph. Anderson gave us this graph, but this whole thing was not a complete graph. A, B, C, D, uh, the nodes A, B, C, D did not, the subgraph on the nodes A, B, C, D was not a complete graph. Steen's Gauss algorithm does that. It creates a complete graph on these uh, nodes. 
So Anderson's algorithm is cubic in the number of pointers. Steensgaard's algorithm is nearly linear in the number of pointers. How can Steensgaard's algorithm be so efficient? By an orders of magnitude. The reason is that Anderson's wisdom says add edges and let the number of successors increase. This is inclusion-based wisdom. Steensgaard's equality-based wisdom says add edges and merge multiple successors and maintain a single successor of any node. That's the idea. So because we are making fewer distinctions in Anderson's algorithm than the distinction made by, uh, we, we're making fewer distinctions in Steensgaard's algorithm than the distinctions made by Anderson's algorithm. Steensgaard's algorithm is efficient. Similarly, because we are making fewer distinctions in Anderson's algorithm than a flow sensitive algorithm, Anderson's algorithm is more efficient than a flow sensitive algorithm. So let's look at Anderson's graph. So Anderson's graph, we if we construct it, we get A points to B and then we get A points to C and B dot N points to D. So Steensgaard's graph will merge B and C after these two statements. And now when we say B dot N points to D, Anderson's approach will say this and B dot N points to C. It will say B dot N points to C, whereas Steensgaard's algorithm will do this. It will merge B and C and therefore it will merge C and D and therefore we are going to get this particular graph and therefore this algorithm is far more efficient than Anderson's algorithm. Since a larger number of pointers are treated alike and fewer distinctions are made, we get much smaller points to graph. There are efficient union find algorithm to merge intersecting sets. The idea is find if there is something common between two sets. If yes, just make a union of these sets. There are very, very efficient data structure based algorithm uh, for union find. Let's look at the second example uh, through Anderson's analysis. Uh, here we, we, are, we are once again showing an example on fields. Uh, the earlier exa uh, example had just one single path. Now we have two paths and the types are given here, but let's not worry about let's uh, the types. Let's assume for the purpose of this discussion that uh, the program is type correct. So we have x points to u and y points to v. So we have x points to u and y points to v and the constraints on pointy sets are P of X includes U and P of Y includes V. Then we process this statement which says the F field of the point of pointies of Y should point to pointies of X as well. So we include this constraint. The F field of pointy of V should point to U as well because X points to uh, because y points to v, so therefore we will have the f field of v pointing to u. And then we say y points to u, so we have u included in pointy set of y, so we have y pointing to u. And now we redo the statements, we revisit the statement. And then this doesn't bring out any changes. Now this statement adds this edge because every pointy of Y, the F field of pointy of Y should point to the pointies of X. So U is a pointy of Y. So F field of U must point to pointy of X, which is U itself. Okay. And this is the graph. Uh, so this is the graph that we had obtained in uh, Anderson's analysis. Now let's apply Steensgaard's analysis. It treats all pointers as e all pointies of a pointer as equivalent locations. So we get transitive closure of pointies of all equivalent locations, and they are all equivalent. So let's begin with the Anderson's points to graph. 
So we add effectively additional constraints, which is unify u and v because they are pointies of x, uh, because they both are pointies of y. So when we unify these, u and v are equivalent. So we get these edges. There will be an edge from u to v because there was an edge from v to f or uh, v to u on f. We will have an edge from u to v on f, and then we will have a, an edge. We have an edge from u to u on f, so we will have an edge from v to v on f, and we will have an edge from x to v because we have an edge from x to u. So this is the points to graph that we obtain using Steen's bus algorithm. So here are a couple of tutorial problems. I am not going to explain them to you in details. They have been worked out in the slides. Uh, the idea is to create inclusion based graphs, points to graph and equality based points to graph for both these methods. I will simply run through these without explaining. If you have any doubts, please talk to your TA or get back to me. These are the graphs that we obtain. Please try to construct these graphs. There is a step by step construction of these graphs also here. I am simply running them, the running through the construction. Please try to understand it. There is another uh, uh, tutorial problem for you to solve to compute flow insensitive points to information using inclusion based method as well as equality based method compute flow insensitive points to analysis. So with this we come to the end of flow insensitive points to analysis. In the next lecture we will look at the flow sensitive points to analysis.